The competition on Great British Menu is really fierce. The nation's top chefs are pushing themselves to the limit to produce spectacular food to share. There have been highs and lows, and the veteran chefs are driving them hard. Skill and execution is what I'm looking for. That's what a Great British Menu chef is all about. This week, three of the Southwest's most ambitious chefs step up to the challenge. Returning chef John Hooker, keen newcomer Paul Ainsworth, and Michelin star holder Andre Garrett all have their sights trained on the People's Banquet. I think having a Michelin star background helps with this sort of thing, Andre. The first set piece is the starter, and the fight is between spring vegetables with cured pig's cheek, Cornish duckling with scotch eggs, and slow roast pork belly. But there can only be one winner. I believe I can come out on top. You know, I want to win, I want to get a dish to the banquet. I'm here this week to compete and I'm ready for a fight. The big challenge for the chefs this year is to get out into their local communities and find the unsung heroes who use food power to bring people together. The People's Banquet will celebrate their work, and they'll be amongst the guests. You know, it'd be the biggest honour to, to actually cook for these people, because they're people that devote their lives to these amazing causes. These elite chefs have to create dishes that are perfect to share. That looks like a real royal feast, that, doesn't it? Platters that will wow the guests and get people talking when they're served at the ultimate street party. Scrutinising the chefs this week is a man who has two Michelin stars to his name and recently won Restaurant of the Year. It's former Southwest champion Michael Keynes. It's his scores that will determine who faces the judges on Friday. I think the challenge this year is going to be really difficult. It's going to take the chefs out of their comfort zone. It's not an easy challenge and I tell you, these guys better rise to the occasion. Check on, four covers. First up is John Hooker. Born, bred and trained in Devon, he's passionate about showcasing local ingredients. Last year he was narrowly beaten to the Southwest title. Now he's back with fire in his belly. I did well, but I didn't do well enough. I have to overcome a lot more hurdles in order to truly shine in this year's competition. His strategy is to stick with his personal style of putting his stamp on British staples to him, it's a surefire recipe for success. The traditional values, family service, people getting brought together with the food with great, big, bold flavours. Hey, John. For my start, I'm doing a slow roast pork belly, a salad of um, summer and spring vegetables, and I've got some cob ham from Cornwall. Oh, yeah? Some cured. I'm going to bake that up with some honey and crisp it up, serve that with it. And then I've got... Um, some apples, I'm going to do pickled apple, and then I'm also doing pickled apple puree. So what's the inspiration behind this sharing platter and this dish? For me, it's all about almost like a family service, the food inspiring people, bringing people together at the table. Obviously, you can see that you're wearing the go. No, I'm <laughs> confident as ever. No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> so John's gone for a hearty starter, packed with some of the Southwest's finest ingredients. But is his slow-roasted belly of pork with mustard, apple and pickles the best way to begin a banquet. John's got to prove to me that this dish isn't a main course and that it's a delicate, well-balanced starter. It's quite a challenge. One main course away, one veg, one pork du jour. Please. Next up is Michelin-starred Andre Garrett. He was classically trained in London and Paris, but is confident he can make his style work for a street party. I had to think very much outside the box, um, completely different than what I might cook normally in a restaurant. Andre grew up in Bath, but is now head chef at London's Galvin at Windows. He's hoping to draw on his French culinary training to answer this year's brief. I, I looked a lot at the old classical way of cooking, back to Escoffier days and, and, and the great French dishes, and um, you, you had that, that sharing idea. Andre's taking this competition very seriously. Hey, Andre. What's the name of the dish you're cooking for me? Well, I'm doing a cocotte of spring vegetables uh -huh. with a Wiltshire cured pork chick and a little mini brioche. 
So vegetables wise, got some asparagus. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to use the best of the best of what the spring has got. I've got yep. asparagus, I've got radish, lettuce. Fantastic. So I want to bring that whole springtime together. And then I've looked at my Wiltshire cured pork cheeks. I pre-cure these yeah. and then I, I slow cook them like a ham. I'm hoping to, to, to bring that idea of sharing to the table and everyone ripping and talking yeah. points. Like John, Andre's using pork, but he's keeping it light with his French-style vegetable stew served with brioche. He's sure the fresh, clean flavours will be a winner, but Michael's got some serious concerns. Andre's dish is very humble and simplistic in its, uh, in its concept, and I just hope it's got that you know, theatre and excitement in its presentation that we're looking for. Now we're going to go one monkfish, one lamb, one cod, one beef. The last competitor is Paul Ainsworth, Trained under Gary Rhodes and Marcus Waring, he then struck out with his own restaurant, number six in Padstow, Cornwall. It's his first time in the competition, and he's aiming high. It would mean the world to me to have a dish on the People's Banquet. It would really show people what I can do. Paul's trademark is simple, quirky cooking with a sense of fun. I think the best way is leaving you wanting more, not kind of, you know, Full up, like, you know, you know, push it away, but wanting more. OK, service, go, please. Hey, Paul. Hi, Michael, how are you? So, tell me, what's the dish that you're going to be uh, putting up today? OK, I'm going to be uh, showcasing uh, Cornish duck, huh? OK, and then just giving it a little, just a really nice sort of spring salad of asparagus, radishes, uh, spring onion and cucumber, little poached rhubarb, and then some little pancakes. And then alongside that, I'm going to do uh, little scotch eggs. So what was the inspiration behind this dish? Um, I just wanted to pick family sort of favourites, and that are just great to graze and share and just kind of get sort of stuck in and stuff. Paul's using British ingredients, but serving them in a Chinese style. But while his duckling with asparagus, rhubarb pancakes, and smoked duck scotch eggs might be witty, he's also taking a big risk. Paul's dish sounds fun. Immediately he's taken the inspiration from the takeaway scenario where you sort of have the crispy duck in the pancakes, but he's given a modern twist on it. He's just got to make sure he executes it in a way which doesn't make it taste like a takeaway. As the three contenders get cracking with their prep, returning chef John seizes an early opportunity to put the wind up his rivals. You boys feeling the pressure then? Yeah, I'm, feel, yeah, I'm feeling, uh, feeling the pressure. More from you, though. It's not about doing it previously. It's all about the food, isn't it? It's all about getting one of those dishes to the banquet. I think it's very important that someone from the southwest is there. I think we've got a strong uh, chance this year. But to be in with a chance, they must withstand Michael's scrutiny. I'm feeling a lot of pressure cooking for Michael. <laughs> yeah. I must say. So it's when you start scoring, that's when you feel the pressure. John's been here before, so he's, I think he's got the upper hand. I think it's going to be a, a good challenge, and I'm looking forward to it. Andre's quietly getting on with his pig's cheeks, while Paul's starting his stock, and Michael's on the lookout for the slightest mistake. Both John and Andre have chosen pork for their starters, which just adds to the rivalry. How's that pork belly? Up on time? So it renders in time. <laughs> good chefy dish. That's why you've chosen it, ain't you? <laughs> hey? Andre might have a Michelin star, but he knows that John's previous experience of the competition could well give him the edge. Meanwhile, across the hobs, the other newcomer, Paul, has made a start on his duck. He's ambitious and keen to impress, but has he taken on too much? Paul's got a lot going on, though, but I think that's going to be his challenge, really, is how all those elements are going to come together to create one dish. The chefs are well underway with their starters, but one of them has taken his eye off the ball and the smell of burning fills the kitchen. John's furious with himself. Burn ham, boys. Burn ham. Oh, f***. Try again. Johnny burn his ham. Sod's law, you do it as soon as Michael comes in. There's a big load of waft of smoke. Oh. What's going on? It's done a bit too long, Chef. Is it? Caught me out, innit? I've got time to get more in, so it's not a problem. It's not just the mishap that has Michael concerned. Listen, I'm um, a bit worried about your dish a little bit. Um, is it not a bit hearty? I mean, is it more the main course than a starter, John? It's the lightness of the salad, and that's going to cut through everything. So those little pockets of flavour with the crackling will just marry it all together. Looking forward to that. 
that crunch without the bitter burn. Good round, thank you. Just reminds me of last year uh, a little bit where he's easily distracted, whereas with uh, Andre, he's very focused and, uh, and poor uh, on what they're doing. I mean, technically, he's going to have to raise his game. Those two other guys there are really sharp. John's cooking skill is under the microscope, but to really shine in this contest, he must also prove he's mastered the brief. He's looked to his own past to inspire his ideal sharing menu. John's passion for good food dates back to childhood days in the Devonshire countryside. On the way to my granddad's farm now, it would always be a great experience around with all my cousins, all of the family. At the end of it, we always have a great, huge meal and put the world to rights. John learned to cook with his gran and to manage a small holding with his granddad. It was a hands-on education in food production. We used to milk the cows in the shipping. The cow would milk in there. You're right in that bottom corner. The cow would be tied up by the neck, and you would milk the cow. That's where the cow was, down that bottom corner. I remember that milking stool. <laughs> you were the best milker. You were the most strength in your hands, and that's what made, that's what made the best cream. I remember trying to keep the dung out of the bucket, oh, it's, it's, and then trying not to get kicked off my that, stool by the cow. That is, uh, that, well, of course. <laughs> the fresh produce went straight into big family meals, with everyone sharing and talking at once. That's where I feel inspired from living off the land, farming the oh, land. Oh, living off, living off the land is right. Living off the land is living well. John inherited a skill from his gran that's perfect for this year's competition. How to adapt dishes when lots of people show up for dinner. She do it in a snap. So, you know, I can draw on those experiences I had as a child helping her to bring that to the table for my Great British menu this year. Back in the kitchen, John needs to use every trick in the book to get his pork belly starter back on track. His rivals include classically trained Andre, the only one of the three chefs to hold a coveted Michelin star. But hard at work on his ambitious duck dish, newcomer Paul refuses to be phased by Andre's awards. Do you think having a Michelin star background helps with this sort of thing, Andre? Well, I know that, I know that Michelin top, star top. chestnut was going to come out, yeah. so uh, yeah. Yeah, obviously there's pressure on me. Yeah. He's a three star boy, isn't he? You only got one. Paul did work under a three star chef in Paris. If I was washing up when I was there, does that count, does it? <laughs> they're all giving as good as they get, and that adds to the pressure they're under. I've forgotten how intense it is. It's full on, especially cooking against the calibre of, you know, Paul and Andre. Now they all need to concentrate, as they're being watched like a hawk by Michael. He's concerned that Andre's classic style may be missing the mark. Andre, one of the things I was really curious to understand is the presentation of the obviously pork cheek going to be separate in a bowl is it um i'm putting some pork cheek diced into the uh, into the broth and then there's going to be some onto the little plate which you then dress into oh, as see. well there's some little pea shoots just to give a little bit of a, an elegant touch so you're quite confident that yours perhaps more suited as a starter oh as a starter i think yeah the risk is maybe it isn't risky enough. Maybe the creativity is going to be uh, somewhat subdued compared to some of the other dishes going on. But hey, who knows? All the chefs have had to stretch their creativity to the limit this year to dream up dishes worthy of our street party celebration. And Andre's quest for ideas took him back to his Somerset roots. He grew up in Bath, where his grandmother worked as maitre d' at the prestigious pump room. Yeah, here I am again. When we were children, we always used to come in the kitchen. I remember this very big old grand kitchen and all of the chefs in their tall white hats and big stock pots boiling away. And I can remember standing here with my mum. I was totally transfixed on all these chefs and all this busy time and bubbling stock pot. And that got me into cooking. Having been introduced to cooking in lavish kitchens and serving palatial dining rooms, it's hardly surprising that Andre became a very upmarket chef. His mum joined him at the pump room to share some family memories. So who's this? Well, it's Granny, and uh, she was a bit, she was like you, she was very fussy about her job. And everything had to be spick and span. That's 1930 to 1950. Look, look at the palms there. Yeah, that was just how it was, yeah. So this one here reminds me of the banquet, what we're cooking for. 